Hey, everybody. It's Coach Jen, and welcome to Tai Chi to the People. And we have Sam here joining us from the Philippines. We have Autumn here joining us here in North Hollywood. And uh, I want to address something. Uh, Sam and I were just talking about um, the half breathing um, Tai Chi to the People uh, that we did, I think, two weeks ago or so. Uh, so if you find that, I, I want to make sure that, uh, and if you are attempting to integrate it into your forms, that is experimental breathing. Um, meaning that you might do an inhalation and an exhalation or an exhalation and an inhalation. That's experimental breathing that is based on my experience competing in push hands and playing, uh, essentially grappling and, and pretty much any martial art where you, you have to be more aware of, you may be more aware of your unconscious breathing. So when I have moments of awareness of something that I might not uh, often pay attention to, uh, Autumn, if I can, I can uh, we're just do an experiment. Uh, we're just going to play freestyle for a second. I just want to show you what I mean by that. And just go. So she's going to try to push me to the wall or throw me. And I might inhale, exhale, inhale. Like, just do these little bounces to, to coordinate my breath work. Uh, I'm exhaling to drop, inhaling to, to come up. And to make that more overt, I might, I might inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale, just to drop pressure on her spine down here. So I'm using my hands to roll at like the, the white crane spreads his talons, gentle press. This is another example that white crane spread, spreads his talons, gentle touch to make someone take a step. You're lifting up on the muscles of the lower back to make them take a small step forward to control where they step. And I'm doing that, let's say at the same time that I'm inhaling and I'm expanding my, my rib cage to claim space here. So I might inhale and lift and then exhale and drop just so I'm, dro I'm dropping pressure here. So these things happen all the time in, in sparring, um, whether it's push hands or any grappling or, or any uh, sparring in general. Um, and my comment before was to experiment with that breathing in Qigong, uh, Negong, uh, push hands, uh, your uh, form, etc. So just be cautious because when these things are experimental, uh, I mean that um, I'm playing with it from the perspective of I do my Negong, I do my form practice regularly, uh, and I have a foundation. And I just want to make sure I've met folks in the past who, you know, they'll just start Qigong and they're already doing Yang style exercises, meaning like they're doing the hard breathing and things like that. And, you know, some folks get heart palpitations, they get different types of, of, uh, of physical challenges that come up abruptly because they've abruptly started a new idea, a new type of training without doing something that eases them into it first. So I just wanna share that with all of you that it is experimental, please proceed with caution. And uh, without further ado, we're gonna start our training session for today. So of course, this is, I'm wearing a Justice for Hire t-shirt, which is a martial arts show cinematic universe that I'm producing that anybody can join from justiceforhire.app. And so you can check it out right there. So uh, check it out if you want to be a martial arts, you know, your own martial arts superhero. <laughs> Real fun stuff. Uh, my company Real World has been a, built a cinematic social network where anything you post is part of a movie or a show that we are producing as a community and Justice for Hire is our very first show. So you can join and it's awesome. And we got like 7.5 million views in our first episode of TikTok. Um, but we have our own app, and that's justiceforhire.app. And we're also raising our oh, WeFunder so that anybody can make shows just like Justice for Hire on their own uh, with the community and our shows or films. And so you can find out more about what we're doing at realworld.com, and you can invest in own part of that company and help us build out our patent pending technology on wefunder.com slash realworld. So I'll put all those links here, and uh, let's go for it. Let's, let's start doing some Tai Chi. So... Making sure that uh, there's some good light in here. All right, that's pretty good. So we're gonna stand feet shoulder width apart in parallel, imaginary string lifting you from the top of the head, the tailbone dropping straight down like there's a weight on it. The mouth is closed with the tongue gently rested on the ceiling of the mouth. All the breathing will be in the belly, the lower down chin, which is three finger lengths below the belly button. And as you start to breathe and soften yourself into this stance, 
softening the knees, the weight shifts to the heels, the center of each heel, like you have a nail coming out of the heel into the ground, just a nail. And that nail is your awareness. That awareness, doosh, your attention going right through each one of your heels into the ground. Palms are facing flat down, and there's special attention on the middle finger of each hand. Special attention. As you inhale, you feel the belly expand. And you feel the color, give the sensation of breathing a color gathering right in the belly. Exhale, roll that color down. The arms, the palms, and fingertips. Inhale, deep. Exhale, down. Inhale, exhale. Drop the hand. Inhaling up, up the heaven. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Today we are going to focus on exercises, Nagong exercises that have a direct sports push hands application. And when I say sports push hands, it's not really a term that I love, but There we go. Making sure that's nothing important. Nope. Okay. So, um, one more inhaling up. Even deeper. Even deep. So, I will do showcase the, the Nagong exercise and then we'll move into the application. And Autumn will be here to help us go through the applications. It'll be great. Hollow fist rest around the hip. Yeah, I'm pulling my pants up so that I don't feel any. Anytime your pants might like, you know, get tight in certain areas, just fix them so you can get the full range of motion. And hollow fist, rest right on the hip, tailbone dropping straight down, feet shoulder width and a half apart. Exhale, pelvis rotates in the femur. Inhale, breath pulls to the side. Uh, eyes on the belly button, exhale down. Inhale, up. Exhale down. And reverse. Inhale, up. Exhale. Inhale, up. Exhale. Inhale, breath lifts the wrist. Exhale, the palm of the fingertips. Inhale, up. Exhale. Inhale, stand a bit. Exhale, so we're straightening the legs. Inhale, deep. Exhale, hands float down. Soften everything from the head to the heels. So and really move, move the awareness at the speed of the fingers. So the awareness, my fingers are pointed. If you notice from here, my fingers, if I draw a line, or go right, the line will stop right here at the top of my head. That's where I want my awareness to be, when my fingers are pointed up. As they float down, boom. So as they float down, my awareness is actually going to be on my backside at this level. And then going down, wherever my fingers are pointing, that's where my awareness goes. So you want the awareness to track down. So you want to be able to move your attention slowly down your, down, 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 down. I just, I'm looking at my, my forearm and I'm, it's like as if I'm tracing my attention down from my forearm elbow area to my fingertip. In the same way you want to be able to trace the attention down back of the neck, Upper back, middle back, lower back, backs of the legs, behind the kneecaps, the calves, the ankles, the heels, into the ground. Do it one more time. Inhaling up, breath lifts the wrists. So you really want to make sure that you're not lifting the arms by themselves for this particular type of breathing um, mechanic, meaning that my breath is lifting my wrists as if there's a pulley system. And then exhale, the color washes through the hands, the palms and fingertips. So you have the idea of the pulley to lift and to drop the arms. And then you have the, the flooding, the color visualization, flooding through the arms and pulling in. Those are two different but complementary mechanics that layer on top of each other. Exhale, wash it out. Inhale, strings are pulling my wrist back, imaginary strings, but the color is washing in 
flooding in through my fingertips into the belly. And then exhale, the hands float down, the awareness is going down. The neck, upper back, middle back, lower back. Down the legs, behind the knees, calves, ankles, heels into the ground. Everything just softens. And what that means is that you're minimizing the tension. You're doing your best to release any unnecessary tension so you can hold the shape and the posture with minimal effort. Minimal effort. Doesn't mean there's no tension because tension is important to be able to hold a posture. Uh, but you want to minimize it so that you can maximize and optimize your movement. Now inhaling up. Exhale out. We're still in our warm up, finishing up right now with golden tortoise from the 12 yin set of Nagong, which is actually a, a yang exercise that starts off the yin set. Exhaling, pelvis rotates on the femur. My feet are shoulder width and a half apart. I go all the way down so my eyes are looking straight down. My elbows are in front of my eyes. Side. Notice that my back is a little curved here. If that's happening to you, you don't want that. You want to stick the butt out so that you take that curve out of the spine, flatten the spine. It should be flat like a table. The shoulder blades, my, my shoulders. I have to check in with myself all the time, every day. Every time I do Tai Chi, soften the areas that need to be softened. Elbows as high as the eye line, almost there. Inhaling into the belly. Exhale, wash the color down the legs into the ground. Inhale into the belly. Exhale, wash the lungs. Inhale into the belly. Exhale down the arms, palms and fingertips. Inhale, open the hands. And exhale, reaching straight through the legs, straight back. And remember, when you do this, your back may curve as you reach back. That might happen. If that happens, it's okay. You just inhale, lift the collarbone to reestablish that flat back. And of course, you have an imaginary string with the top of the head forward, and another one pulling the tailbone back. So you have those two opposing um, nice, gentle pulls. Inhale in deep. Exhale, wash the color down the legs into the ground. Inhale deep. Exhale, wash the color down the arms and palms, fingertips. Inhale deep. Wash the color through the lungs. And inhale one more time. Spread the color throughout the whole body. Soften the arm. Inhale, breath lift the wrist, wrist lift the body. Exhale, wash it out. And from here, we're going to start our first exercise. We're going to inhale deep. And exhale, turning. Inhaling up. This is the crank. Now, notice the crank starts from hugging the tree, meaning that hugging the tree is one of the most well known Tai Chi Nagong exercises or Qigong exercises in general in the world. And, and in fact, most people, when they talk about standing meditation, they often talk about this one exercise. So here we go. You have hugging the tree. Hugging the tree in Wu style, you'll see that the elbows are often down, but the fingers are still right here. And this exercise that we're doing is from Wu style, actually. Um, however, the shape of the arms is going to be closer to the Yang style lifting of the elbow, meaning slight inflation of the tricep. It's not so much that you're lifting the elbow. It's more so that you're inflating the tricep, which lifts the elbow. There's a difference. There's a difference in intention and there's a difference in body mechanic when you do that. It's the difference between raising your hand and, uh, and feeling the fingers lift your hand up. So meaning that the tips of the fingers are pulled. So here, we're gonna hold this for about six breaths. And we're gonna to inhale to the belly and exhale down the arms. Inhale into the soft part of the arms, through to the belly, and exhale down the hard part through the fingertips. When you exhale through the fingertips, it should feel as if electricity or little tingling is jumping between your fingers, between your hands. The palms should face your chest here. I have scar tissue in my arms, so I can't turn my palms all the way in my chest, but I recommend that you do.
Inhale deep. Exhale. And turn. I am the middle finger of the top hand. We've done this before. Inhaling out. Exhale, turn. Now the neck does not move. As a matter of fact, the entire torso is remaining still. This type of integrated movement is super important because I've noticed that I'm not pumping yet. Sometimes you pump on this. We're not going to do that variation yet. First, we're just doing this one because the arms and the mechanic and the breathing and intent woven into them is so key to getting this move right, especially when you start doing push hands, using this in, in your moving step push hands or fix step. Inhaling up, exhale. The hand that's dropping, notice that the tricep deflates. As that tricep deflates, these fingers should feel like they're sticking to something, dropping and pulling it down naturally with gravity. While these fingers and this arm, by nature of the straight arrow shape here, are pushing something over. And now inhaling, the tricep is re-engaged, the breath inflates and exhale. Now this hand starts to stick and pull and drop as the elbow drops straight down, the tricep deflates and this one pushes over. Notice that I'm pushing over my own shoulder line. When you have an opponent, you're gonna push them through from one shoulder, through the neck to the other shoulder, pushing right over. Sam fell off, here we go. So push through your shoulder line. I am the middle finger of the top hand. Inhaling up, inflate that tricep again. Exhale. Push the color from the belly through the arm, through the fingers. Inhaling up. And remember, this visualization, this breath work, it actually is, it requires strength. It requires strength. It means it requires practice. It requires you to build up the mental uh, strength to maintain these visualizations and these sensations that you're generating within your own mind. It takes time. So if you find that I'm giving you too many notes or too many things to focus on, choose one. Choose something to focus on because there are many layers to this and I'm doing my best to articulate as much as I'm experiencing um, that, and that I've, I've uh, been guided on over the years as well. So inhaling up. For a beginner, I recommend focusing on the waist and the breathing, moving, everything else. Meaning I inhale up, exhale, and it's like you're dumping a barrel over. If you're holding a barrel, you're dumping out the contents. Inhaling up, lifting that barrel back up, exhale, like a big barrel of apples. That was the way our, our Sifu first described it. Now you can do this exercise standing up, exhale, sink, and sit. Inhaling up, exhale, sink 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 and sit. But I recommend staying, only doing that to warm yourself up in similar ways that we've done other than going exercises. To warm up the, the uh, as it was described to me, the, the lifting, the rising and falling of the chi. Inhale up. And when I say chi, I don't just mean the energy. I also mean your center of gravity. So you lift up and center of gravity is here coming up. And then you drop it down even more. Inhaling up, center of gravity stays here. Even though you're going up, exhale down. So you still have that focus in the lower down 10. Additionally, if you do the standing, oftentimes you might move more of your hips than your waist. And that's okay as long as you allow the stretch to happen in the groin area, in the crease. So stretch, meaning push the knee forward as you turn the opposite direction so that you can maintain the stance. If you don't push the knee forward and feel that stretch, you'll pull the knee. And if you pull the knee, it's really not that great for the joints and it's also not great for the discipline of separating hip power from waist power. So feel that stretch. And then let's do a few more. One, inhale up, exhale down. Pushing color through the top hand. 
Inhale, drawing it into the bottom hand, it's becoming the top. Exhale, push it out. One hand is pulling, the other one's pushing. And that pull is not a hard pull, meaning that there's no muscle involved in dropping the arm downward. It's more so the elbow, the weight of the elbow, and the stickiness of the fingers and your sensitivity connecting to another person. Okay, now step one foot forward. And now we're in a front stance, we're doing the same thing. This is going to connect to our application. So exhale. You can stand up and exhale. So then stand up, exhale. Inhale, and breathe. Exhale. Now notice when I stand up, I'm pivoting my back foot. So my back foot, when I go across my body, the heel pivots. I pivot on the ball of the foot, the heel comes out, just like I'm throwing across, cross, cross, same way, throw, throw, same idea. So exhaling down. Now when I go the other way, I will pivot on the heel so my toes turn out. I want my toe to turn out. So I pivot on the heel before I, so I don't shift the weight. Inhale up, pivot on the ball of the foot. Inhale up, pivot on the heel. When I pivot on the heel, it looks like I'm skating right into my horse stance again. Inhaling up. Inhale up, exhale down. Now this helps you protect your knees over time, really super important, especially when you're playing with an opponent. If someone falls, someone's falling, they might be going right for your kneecap. So you're protecting, if there's pressure here, you might turn and shift the weight to, to, to again, help avoid uh, any particular pressure that might hit your knee. And stay seated for this next one. And now we're gonna inhale up, and we're not gonna pivot at all. And just feel the difference in healing up. More waist power, less, less hip extension, but there is still some hip. Notice the limitation on the flexibility without the, the pivot. The pivot is very important, but it's also important to know when not to pivot. And you'll have different moments in your push hands experience where one makes sense versus the other, and you'll know over time when. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Just switch legs and we'll stand up. Same idea. Exhale, pivot. Inhaling up, exhale, pivot on the heel. Again, notice that when I pivot on to the inside, I don't shift the weight because if I shift the weight, then I'm turning all the way around, which is another move, which is great, but that's not what we want. Inhale up and exhale down. Inhaling up. Inhale up, exhale down. Now, an important thing to note here is this inhalation up can also be all the way. You can sometimes, if you want to do reverse breathing on this, this is a variation. You can inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, stand up, exhale down. Inhale, stand up, exhale down. Sometimes when you're doing this move, you need to inhale up because that's how the opponent is going to break their balance. And sometimes you inhale up and you get them all the way and their balance still isn't broken. So you might need to exhale and drop them in. And so we'll go into that in a second, but you can practice both uh, and also give yourself a little bit of a wave sensation by inhaling up, exhaling, drop. Inhaling up, exhaling, drop. Kind of feel that wave and now stay stationary. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Now, if you've done Greco Roman wrestling before, you might notice that this move, the application that we're going to do, is very similar to a Greco Roman move that is a lot more about muscle and leverage um, than it is about finesse. The finesse moves of the Tai Chi push hands, sports Tai Chi push hands players, especially in Taiwan, um, some of the greatest finesse moves I've ever seen. Um, because they're minimizing the muscle and maximizing um, the mobility, the optimization. 
Uh, I want to talk about that one extra move here. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll go right into this right now. So here it is. Here it is in push hands. So Autumn will do 10 on me, I'll do 10 on her. We'll do five each, actually. So here we are, we're playing. Now, actually, let's just play for a second. We're playing and boom, we come in, we come into this moment right here. So we have this 50-50 lockup. This is the 50-50 clinch. So we're here. Now notice that my hand, in general, if you're in the 50-50 clinch, one hand is going to be through your opponent, likely going for an underhook. A lot of grapplers will go for here. We'll just get this position on the shoulder blade. And you'll have this other position right here, controlling your opponent's elbow. If you don't have, and also notice that I'm pinning my opponent's wrist. I'm not squeezing tight. It's just, it's my energy is so much downward and sticking that's connecting to my opponent. So if I let go of this, of, of my other inside arm, I still have this. And you probably have seen this in judo where you can turn and drag the opponent off of their, um, their balance. So you have this, you have this, or you have here. Now, this is the moment we're actually talking about. So we're playing, we're going to do this credit board here. And you can inhale up and break the posture. Um, but if you do it with timing, meaning you're really paying attention to the opponent, uh, then you'll be able to spin them off balance and really turn them and get them either if you're doing fixed step push hands, get them to move. And if you're doing moving step push hands, uh, hopefully get a, a, a throw. Now, if you're doing this and, you, and they don't fall, you might step back and drop them through. And so there's a bunch of ways to do this, but the first and foremost, uh, idea is to do the drill. So Autumn and I are going to do this drill. Uh, yes, you're going to exactly. You're going to go in here. So I'm going to go uh, five. And one hand is going to be right here on the shoulder blade. Now, I'm not grabbing the shoulder blade, but I am sticking to it. Can we go a little closer to the camera? That means that, let's say this was a shoulder blade. Obviously, it's not. But I'm, I'm see my hands are not gripping tight. This is a grip tight. I'm not gripping tight, I'm positioning on and I'm sliding my hands down, dropping my weight. So whatever part of the body you get on, this is sticking in Tai Chi, you slide, you, you create a little bit of a connection and pressure and slide down. So I'm doing the same thing with the shoulder blade here. So I'm gonna slide, I'm gonna slide with my wrists in her armpit, I'm gonna slide with the back of my thumb on, on whatever surface I can get it, and then my fingers on the shoulder blade. All this is gonna stick and slide as I drop my hip and my elbow. My hip and my elbow are connected in this moment as, as well. So I wanna make sure that I drop my hip and my elbow at the same time, right here. Notice that I went a little bit higher, but that's not necessary for this move. Um, that was compensation for not having this position. So now I have my right leg forward, my right hand's on the inside, my left hand's on the outside, 50-50 clinch. I'm going to inhale up, exhale, turn. And you're gonna do your best, your partner's gonna do their best to maintain their footing. So they're gonna go with it just a little bit for you to work your muscles and your breathing on them. So now we're getting more into uh, more traditional martial arts drilling than a Tai Chi drill, which might be more uh, uh, overtly flowing. But you wanna drill this, I guarantee you. So inhale up, exhale over. And so her weight was, was uh, pushed on my shoulder. So I'm going to reposition my leg just a little bit so I can get this a little bit more. And I will note that sometimes when this, with this exercise, especially live, you want to go a little bit left before you go right. So you'll give your opponent a little, a little pressure one way, and then you'll jolt them the other way. And the jolt is coming with that drop that drop. So I'll go three more on autumn and then she'll go to me. Sure. Uh, another note is that you notice that my knee, uh, you don't have to do this, uh, but you can. And this is, a, this is another technique that should be drilled on its own. Meaning don't, don't drill the whole thing at once, the drop, the shoulder, everything, and then the knee. Um, add the knee after you do a few of, of these. So uh, the thigh, more specifically, the thigh cutting into your opponent's thigh. This thigh experience, as I turn her, boom, 
get her to go over the knee. And sometimes you might even do a drill where you walk one, two, and then like one, two, three, and you step and you cut the, cut the thigh in. So that's something else uh, that's super fun and great to do. So I'll go two more on them. And one more. Now notice the turn. Remember I said there was a Greco-Roman wrestling. Well, I'm just gonna do it next. But there's a Greco-Roman wrestling move that's very similar, similar position, but instead there's a lift. There's a grab of the clothing, the gi, and a lift up. So you're actually lifting the opponent. You're actually lifting the opponent up and then turning them over. That is awesome. It's great, uh, a different type of move. Um, and let that be its own move. If you encounter a Greco-Roman player who says that to you, oh, this is, this is the way you're supposed to be doing that. That's, that's happened to me before. Uh, as a matter of fact, with a Tai Chi player who is a Russian Judo Olympian, a uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, player, um, Emil, who, who, uh, who some of you may know, um, and, and thought that the move was very similar to um, uh, the, the, the Greco-Roman move. They are two very different moves, um, but uh, each one should be trained as its own move and then allow it to manifest yourself. So I'm just gonna go for it five times. Great. So note, Autumn just pushed me away. I recommend sticking to your opponent instead of pushing them away. The reason I recommend that is because this move may not work for your intention. And what I mean by that is that you may go for the throw and you may not get it. So you want to stick with them because they're going to do something else and you're in a dominant position right now. So you don't want to let go of your dominant position. You want to keep going. So Autumn, get your... Um, Let's turn to the other side so they can see your other hand right here. So get this hand on my elbow first, and now move it to my shoulder, my shoulder, armpit area. Slide it up. Great. So notice that she went from the 50-50 clinch and went a little bit deeper. And then on this other side, this is the side she's going to throw me on. She's going to drop me on this side. She has it up there right on the shoulder blade. So go for it. One, two, excellent. She goes left and then right, and she stays me a bit. Let's go over again. Left, right, excellent, excellent. Two more. She goes left, right. One note on her going left. Notice what she did, which is absolutely correct, is that to go left, she inflated her tricep. So she reached, and here's the example. She's reaching through, but not just reaching, she's reaching and expanding the tricep, which lifts the elbow, what we were talking about before. Notice that's the same concept here. So she's doing this first before she pulls me the other way. So she's inhaling up and going. So really important because that helps you draw the line for the shoulders. You want to draw a line across your opponent's shoulders and turn through that line just for a second to get them to resist. The second they resist up here is when you're turning and dropping. That's how you set up the move. So you want to catalyze tension in your opponent. That's how you get this to move. That's how you control the timing. Go one more. Inhaling up. Boom. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, so. Remember, Autumn pushed me away for a second. So let's talk about that moment. And we'll showcase the, the, uh, the Nagel exercise that helps you deal with that moment, which is what we were talking about before, which is here. You throw someone down. It doesn't necessarily work. So you pull and you turn them even more. Notice that I just gave up the leg that I claimed. I claimed this leg. They might still have, they might still have some footing here. So I pick them up, I turn them, they still have footing here. So I pivot my foot and I turn her out. I turn her out even more. And I might even step so I can be even more in more control. So I turn, that doesn't work. So I turn and I hold this leg out here. I might even jump, meaning that 
lift her up, turn, doesn't work, jump out of the way, spin, turn, and get her out of the way. So um, to do that, you want to be very cautious with, with your knees because what you're doing is you're putting a lot of pressure down the legs. So you lift up and then there's a lot of pressure here. So if you're going to step, you're going to widen, if you're going to, to, to drag your opponent down more, you want to cut the angle that they're on. So you're going to cut the angle by stepping and maybe even stepping this leg back and turning them again. If that doesn't work, you might step back farther and kick this out. And that's the big going exercise we're going to work. And this is, this is an exercise that uh, Jordan Ford, I've talked about this in the past, uh, one of my teammates who's in Hawaii right now, in Kona, uh, one of the best push hands players come out of the US, amazing guy. Um, he came up with this exercise and I highly recommend it. Same idea. Now we're doing more of the Wu style elbow dropped position. The reason is because we don't want to keep the elbows high up um, when they're extended at this level um, to each their own. I recommend keeping the elbows down here. And you're going to inhale deep and exhale, and then you're going to engage and drop. Inhaling up, exhale. Now notice I'm standing shoulder width apart. I'm going to step back so you can see that one foot turns all the way out, and notice that the hip disappears. We've done this on Tai Chi to the people before, but we've never done it with the application because uh, I've never had a partner to, to do the application with. So I wanted to show you guys the application. Now, just to review, exhale, inhaling up, 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 exhale, inhaling up, exhale. Now, I also said that when we started to keep the elbows down, and then I said, I corrected myself, said to each their own. I think it's really important to always start with your elbows softened. Now, this is because of my training with Wu style, because there's explicit value in having the elbows down and knowing when to drop your elbow with your hip, et cetera. This Wu style really trains this wonderfully. I do my best to, to uh, reset into that position before I lift the elbows. Most people carry tension that, that, that they just don't know about in their shoulders, and they always wonder why. They normally have the elbows up a little bit, et cetera, um, and it's really important to be able to drop that out completely and then add it intentionally. So when I inflate the triceps, like I am right here, this is an intentional lift. So this is not my natural lift. I trained my natural lift to be right here so that my shoulders are softer. And then exhale, dropping out. And then inhale, now I've engaged that intentional tricep inflation and I drop one out. Same idea, I drop one out and I turn. And this is definitely more about hip and waist moving together, emphasizing the hip, because you're getting out of the way. You're turning somebody into a place that you're moving out of the way of. So you want to exhale and inhale up, exhale down, inhale up. And you want to keep that spine straight. So pelvis is rotating on the femur for the purpose of the exercise. Pelvis rotating the femur, meaning that the spine is not bent over. The chin is aligned, nose forward. Eye on the middle finger of the top hand, inhaling up. Exhale, eye on the middle finger of the top hand. And now let's show how this exercise works as a, there are multiple ways. So if you're doing a fixed step, uh, we only did our right leg forward before, so now we're gonna do our left leg forward. Um, but you should do it on both sides, I highly recommend. I do recommend 10 per, five per person switch, um, and definitely doing it several times. No. So we're right here, we're in the 50-50 clinch again, and here, I'm coming up and I'm turning her out. So this is the first one. Again, I'll do it facing the camera now. Rather than coming over and turning her this way and staying on my front leg, I'm gonna to shift to my back leg. I'm gonna turn her up and I'm gonna suck her into the space and turn her out. So notice that I left this here. 
There's a, uh, if you ever watch my martial arts highlight reel, uh, I, I get this a few times in the Tai Chi, my first time at the Tai Chi World Cup. Uh, I was very proud of that. <laughs> um, but here, inhaling up and drop back and spin them into the space. Now, if you're doing jujitsu, if you're doing any groundwork, notice that that leg right here stays out. This is a sweep. You can put the opponent over this leg. And as they fall over the leg, you spin down with them, bending your knee. So you twist with the pressure. And this is also, as another note, uh, in push hands, how you save your knee in competition when someone falls towards your knee. So you're going to spin, drop, and then spin, 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 kick over and land on top of the opponent. So you're gonna keep that knee safe by spinning the toe and the knee at the same time. So the hip softens and the toe and the knee move at the same time, super important. And we're talking about this also as a way, as a means to, to set up or save the other exercise, the other, the first drill we did. But we're gonna do a few of these first. I'm gonna do three more on the bottom so you can see it properly. So I'm gonna go, I'm going the opposite direction first. So I'm going reaching through, cutting through the shoulder line to establish that. When I feel tension right around here or right here, I'll pull back to get back to their center. That's when I'm going to shift and drop. I'm going to drop, drop, drop. You notice that I'm left leg forward. Two more. And one more. We have a bookshelf here. Let me cautious of that. <laughs> one more. And I'm really setting up my back leg. So I, I shift into it and I set. I'll even spin my back leg a, bit, a little bit with my heel up. Sometimes I'll pivot into it to make sure I wouldn't keep the full foot down. I would pivot the, on the ball of the foot, maybe the heel if you're into that, but I want to keep minimal pressure here so I can find out what the right angle is so I can shift into it safely. This is all about safety for your, um, for your kneecaps because you're, you're really drilling into the ground. So I'm just going to go for it. Exhale. Good stuff. Good. You're not moving the leg. You're shifting from weight here to weight in the back leg. So when you inflate, you're gonna claim this space. You're gonna make me think, she's gonna make me think that she's gonna take all this space. And remember, it's not so much that she's gonna make me think, she's gonna make me feel. Yeah, she's gonna make me feel like, oh, there's a wall here. So I'm gonna push back on that wall. And as I push back on the wall, she's gonna take it away. Awesome. Push out, everything's just fine. If you're good, books your stuff. Kneeling up, and she's gonna pull down. Great. It feels like this leg's not letting me have the full expression. Which leg? This one. Ah, uh, the full expression. What do you mean by the full expression? Like in the drill, in the drill, like. It, okay, like, so you know what I mean. So I'm just saying she feels like her back leg is not allowing her to have the full expression <coughs> of the drill, which is down here. So super important thing to note that. Um, the full expression comes when you get the throw. So if you're not getting the throw on me, you're only following me as much as you need to follow. Follow your partner. So when I do it on her, I'm not really attempting to get a throw on her um, right now because we're just thrilling. And I don't expect to get a throw on her and drilling because um, there, there, there have been times where I've drilled the throw, but really, uh, in, in my Tai Chi push hands training, we don't give each other the throws unless the throws are really earned. So we don't feign the fall. Um, we, 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 we might allow it, but here, this is one of those things where we want to work to, we want to feel the work in our body to get that reposition. So I'm just turning her over. I'm trying to get her to move. And if I catch her at the right moment, I will get the throw. So um, 
versus some, let's say something like this where we're practicing this kind of judo toss and we're really going for lifting each other up and tossing each other down, slant, body slamming on the ground. That's a little bit different. So one more, one. Inhale, yeah. Exhaling and pull. Awesome. So now let's talk about how this connects to um, the first exercise, meaning the we were doing this, inhaling up, exhaling down. It doesn't work. Sometimes you pull here. That might work, but they also might be putting too much pressure on you for you to safely do this and maintain your balance. So let's let's talk about this moment for a second. So I'm going to inhale up. I'm going to exhale. I'm going to turn her over. That didn't work. So I feel where her weight is. It's on my arm. It's in my right shoulder. I feel her pressure. There's a lot of options that the second she gets her bearings, she can take advantage of. So I want to keep her thinking and keep knowing where she's going. So I have to deal with this weight on my shoulder right here, my right shoulder. So what I'm going to do is I have all my weight on my right leg or the majority of it, and I have a little bounce my heel, my left foot is up. So I have a little bounce here. I have some room to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift forward just a little bit. I'm going to shift enough to take my, to step with my left foot. I'm just shifting for a moment. Boom. The second I shift, I'm going to bring this next, the move, the exact move we're talking about. And now and I spin her. And if that doesn't work, then I'll probably, if that doesn't work, it's right there. Obviously it was awkward position, the second I get that little step, so one, two, step three, didn't work out. Now I'm going to take a big jump. I'm going to jump one, two, and I'm going to spin her out. So you're going to keep on working the angle to turn the opponent more than they can turn. And the sharper the angle you cut, the more torque you're gonna get and the more likely they are to spin to the ground. So inhaling up one, exhaling two, doesn't work, three or step three. I'll do it from this angle so you can see. Inhale, push the one direction, exhale, turn it. Doesn't work, step, turn. Doesn't work, step around, bigger step, turn. That big, big step, super important. Let's do that again, just so you guys have a combination that you can work with your partner. So we're now we're taking the Nagon exercise and we're turning it into a combination, which will change how the, the, uh, the health benefits. The Nagon exercise, Nagon is like weightlifting for intention, meaning you're doing these exercises so with such intent, inhaling up, exhaling down. That's not to say that you can't do these other drills with the same intent, but the second I start adding the martial, the sport uh, and strategic concepts, other layers come in. So um, we can do it as an angle exercise, maybe we'll even uh, uh, practice it with that mentality. But right now I'm showing you the strategic application that you can practice a combination as if you were shadow boxing with yourself. So one, inhaling up. So I have the 50-50 clinch. Inhale up one. That this is me disrupting my opponent's weight going left before I go right. Two, turn them over. That didn't work. Three, step and my three is step and turn. So this is our, our, our second, the standing one, and I'm melting the hip out of the way. The hip, that still didn't work, but I have this little bounce right here, and I have their weight right here. So I'm gonna hold on to their weight. And I'm going to bounce and jump, stepping one, step two, and turn. And this is going to be my big throw. This final big move, I'm going to look about as much as I possibly can, 270 degrees. I'm going to do my best to turn all the way over and point back there and to put the opponent down here. If that doesn't work, then what I often do is I'll just repeat the cycle. And I'll do it again. So I, this didn't work. So I'll step, kick across, turn them again. And I'll just do it as many times as I can to get them to either spin out of the ring or go to the floor. Sometimes I'll stop and cut and reverse the angle, meaning turn them, step, turn them the other direction. That's another uh, more sophisticated rhythm 
Uh, but really what you're doing is you're dancing with your opponent. You really want to feel this kind of dancing, flowing uh, experience. And uh, what Autumn and I will do it right now, uh, and just drop one, doesn't work, drop two, doesn't work, three, and I'm just spinning them. And she's kicking around too. If you have a, Autumn will do it to me, and I'll show you the, a way to, to get a nice rhythm going with your partner because if you can catch this rhythm on someone who is not a Tai Chi player, um, the rhythm of someone getting pulled down and stepping up is a natural one. So you don't have to uh, uh, stretch the imagination much to know that you can do this on pretty much any grappler. So it's really great for you to have a strategy around dealing with it, especially if someone's doing it to you. So Autumn's gonna go for the drill, the combination, she's gonna lift me up and she's gonna pull and drop me down. Doesn't work, so she's gonna set her left leg if you're her right leg was forward. So you're gonna pivot onto this leg and step across and then pull me down. Great, so I kick up, boom, I kick up, I kick up, and keep going, keep going. Oh, she's getting dizzy, so let's, let's switch directions. So here, inhale up, and then exhale. Boom, I try to keep on, on the front leg. Doesn't work, so I have my left leg forward. Now I'm stepping my right leg or my back leg across, and I'm turning her to fall over that front leg. Didn't work, I want to stay connected. So I kick up and over and turn, and I just keep on turning her as much as I can. Now notice that we have a lot of distance and Autumn's giving up her position. So it may not be helpful in this type of scenario. If someone gives up their position, change your move. Um, Autumn gave up her position, her arm dropped. Uh, what were we supposed to say? The position was really important. Well, we were good. Well, we but what I'm getting at is that we were drilling it. There's a balance between realism and um, <clears throat> Autumn is wonderful. I will say this, don't let a non-cooperative partner uh, ruin your reality. What I mean by that, this is super important, super important. Uh, this is not necessarily against Autumn, uh, but I want you to know that if you're training with somebody, make sure that you have a set parameter for which to keep doing the drill. And if you mess up on that parameter, parameter, come right back to it. Because uh, too many times, conversation starts to happen with martial artists, where they're saying, well, if you were to do this, I would probably do that. And that's BS. That is literally how you, how you don't achieve a high level of, your, of a particular technique. It's starting to have the conversation of, well, 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 well like tr train one thing deeply. And yes, you can still have these conversations of new ideas, but make sure you silo these things so that each one of them can be trained individually. So if you're training this particular technique, if you uh, uh, lose distance, tell your opponent, hey, you know, I've lost distance. Come a little bit closer together. Make sure your shoulders are connected. Um, if you start to get uh, too far away, the, there's a variation. There's always variations on these things, but never stop your, your, your training. Talk about the moment so that you can actually get a little bit a little bit more intimate with what's happening because the reality is that there's always going to be variations in a the technique. There's never a moment where you hit somebody, they are stunned, and then you can do all this stuff to them. That really doesn't happen in real life like when you're dealing with other uh, skilled martial artists. So don't train for people who have no skill, train for people who are really skilled. And if you, if you lose contact and lose distance here, and you're doing this spin, this could still work, but the more skilled martial artists, the, the less likely it's going to work. So what you wanna do is make sure that you're staying closer here, not tighter, but closer, so that the angles are cut a little bit more sharply. And if, that's, if, if you're having a challenge with an opponent's height or how they're dropping weight onto your body or, or et cetera, that's when you're gonna start making smaller, more detailed adjustments. Meaning that, okay, maybe her shoulders are heavier than my shoulders. So if I, that's the case, then maybe I need to drop my hips back more. Look at this space that's been created here. I can suck shoulder weight into the hip area if I just move my hips back. 
but I keep my shoulders connected. And now I'm dropping downward. And now it's a little bit sharper of an angle for her. And if you find that the arms disconnect, we'll start thinking about the hips. How can you connect with the hips? So make sure that you're always asking each other questions and that these questions can bridge to, to uh, you having variations of the techniques rather than giving up the technique. Because the technique in and of itself is really, really important for you to build upon uh, and for you to test with partners. And there's always going to be new variations with new people, um, but just make sure that you stay, uh, that you don't give up the core uh, value of the techniques, which is you want to put someone on the floor with this spin, with the, which is finesse or muscle. So let's work, uh, review these neg exercises really quickly before we stretch. And we're going to hold the, Hugging the tree, exhale, turn. Inhaling up, exhale, turn. Inhaling up, exhale, turn. Inhaling up, remember you're dropping a barrel. You can stand up if you want, exhale, but then really use the push the knee. Inhaling, exhale. Stretch the knee, open the groin. And step one leg back, inhaling up, exhale. Inhaling up, remember I'm pivoting that back leg. Pivot on the heel, inhale up, pivot on the ball of foot, inhale up, pivot on the heel, back on the heel, ball of foot, back on the ball of foot, heel, heel, ball of foot, ball of foot. Switch legs. Inhale up, exhale. Do your best to really quiet the mind and really start feeling the circulation. And then stay seated. Inhaling up, exhale. Coming up, inhaling up, exhale. Sit. Inhaling up, exhale. Inhaling up, exhale. Exhale. Inhale, out. Exhale. And remember your combination. Inhaling up. I'm putting my getting my front stance, my fighting stance, 50-50 clinch. Inhale. Whatever direction you're going to pull in, pull them in. I'm turning them the opposite way first. And then exhale and turn. Doesn't work. So I step forward and drop onto that leg. Still doesn't work. So I Step forward, kick my leg around, kick the other leg around, and turn. Doesn't work, kick a leg around, kick a leg around, turn. So you kick, kick, turn. The more you do this, the more you can catch some air with it, and the more you can lean your body on your opponent as you suck them into a space, jump over the space, lean the chest on them, and that'll help you to kick your legs up even more to use them like a table as you do this over and over again until you get the, the, the spin, uh, the throw, or they, they fall to the ground. And it will, may not be pretty sometimes, but it will, um, it is effective. So uplifting happens, inhaling up, exhaling down. If you ever have any questions on these exercises, et cetera, or and especially very specific questions, that you might want to work with a partner, always let me know in the comments or even shoot your own video and say, hey, Jan, I got a question about this, this moment here. And we'll go into the details because these things, this is a, uh, I, I'm a big fan of training techniques that go beyond degrees. And what I mean by that is that we're not sticking, when we do the technique, uh, it should work against anyone from any style, not just this Tai Chi style. So you got to find those, those techniques and those approaches to the techniques that allow you uh, that level of, of martial freedom, where you can just set the opponent up regardless of where they're from. And the more tension that they give to you, the better as my uh, Wu style Sifu always said, keep calm. The more tension, the better for you. 
So someone who's really into grabbing, someone who's really into uh, bending over. Again, high level martial artists of, of any particular technique, of any particular style, or high level martial artists. So I never, never want to come with the ego that Tai Chi is the best. Um, but this approach is an approach where uh, we are, are really dissecting, or should be really dissecting, the core breath work visualization and biomechanics of any move. So, one more time, inhaling up, exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. Remember, do your best to minimize, uh, um, to stay focused on all the techniques that you're doing and really break down any technique into three parts. So you can drill each one of those individually and put them all back together. We're inhaling up, turn to the other side, exhaling down. Inhaling up, turn to the other side, exhaling down. And slapping up, 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 up. Up the inside, down the inside, down the outside. Open the shoulders and down the back. Inhaling up. Ocean of blood returns to the source. Just the fingers go up, just the fingers go down. Minimize the tension, just the fingers up, exhale, just the fingers down. One more. Just the fingers up. Just the fingers down. Rub the hands together around the chest. Feel the warmth permeating deeper through the muscles into the lungs. Feel the warmth and then tap around. Really good pressure around the pectoral major muscle and then massage into the pressure point, the lymph nodes in the pectoral muscles even deeper. Go try to feel the cartilage between the ribs and then floating rib up. Yeah. Other side. Knuckles on the small of the back and massage down and then up and reverse it down and up. Collarbone. And then for the reproductive organs, looking up from the collarbone to the chin and relax all the way through the reproductive organs, feet shoulder width apart parallel. Getting this part of the hand, if this was my neck, this part of the hand would be on it, right there, right here. So. And then the counterpoint, the back of the neck, when you're getting sand off the back of the neck, same part of the hand and the fingers. Should feel like a really nice massage, especially if you have any tension in your neck. It'd be very, very helpful. Really feel the muscles coming up, and it's almost like you're gently moving those muscles out of the way, and then they flip back to the center. And hands up on the face to the side, up to the side, up to the side, fingers around the ears, strong pressure. Earlobes, one, two, three, four, five. Scalp, front to back, back to front, front to back, back to front, massage. Front to back, back to front, slapping, and back, back to front, hollow fist, gentle banging, front to back, back to front. Grab the scalp and knee it like that. Another patch, another patch, another patch, and reverse it, another patch, another patch, another patch, and opposites. Three, two, three. three. And reverse it. And top of the forehead massage. One, two, three, four, five. And reverse it. One, two, three. Temples. One, two. And reverse it. For the heart. Right here. And switch. Top and bottom. One, two, three, four, five. Switch. On. Fingers in the groove above the 
gums, about the teeth, massage, and then below, or fire, tongue, mm. reverse it. Fingers flicking out, thumbs flicking out. Press and hold. <clears throat> End drill, one, two, three, tap, one, two, three, top and bottom, and sides. Top and bottom, and sides. Top and bottom, sides. Top and bottom, sides. Top and bottom, sides. Press and hold. One, two, three, four. Other side, press and hold. Drill. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, top and bottom, and sides. Top and bottom, sides, top and bottom, sides, bottom, sides. One more, top and bottom, sides. And one, two, three, grab, one, two, three. Close the eyes, inhale, white leg. Roll from the toes to the top of the head as you inhale. Exhale down the back like a waterfall. And use the sound. Take out the left side. Exhale on the right side. Exhale the belly. Exhale down the legs. Make color come back up. Make a big bubble around you. One more time to the belly. Exhale the light to the top of the head. Let it make a big bubble around you, like a fountain coming out in all directions. Have gratitude for the body. The good people around you, the space that you're in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam, for training, coming out from the Philippines. So grateful for you. And uh, thank you, anybody and everybody who, who watches these. If you ever have a thought, question, or idea, put it on the, put it on, on in the comments, and I will totally answer it. And uh, janstaichi.com to learn more about my Tai Chi stuff and uh, my favorite thing to share. Um, realworld.com to learn about our cinematic social network uh, where anything you post is part of a movie or show that we're making together. Justiceforhire.com to learn about our first show, Justice for Hire. Uh, Wefunder.com slash realworld to invest in that company. And of course, patreon.com slash Jans Tai Chi to support this channel and to have more and more Tai Chi content. I really do want to do um, produce more Tai Chi content. I still have a back catalog that is extensive that I am uh, uploading and, and scheduling as, um, as often as I can. Um, so uh, when you see daily releases, that's because I've had like a, a few hours to schedule um, stuff for many days out. So uh, ever, I'm always here. I love you guys and thank you so much and have a great day.